18th century farmhouse set in the Wilshire countryside. Here, when he isn't away on concert tours, the guitarist Julian Bream tends the lawns and flower beds with the same dedication that's become the hallmark of his play. And he's expanded the house into more than just a home. An old stable now serves as a workshop for a guitar maker. And above, there's a room for informal concerts, recording, and table tennis. Here, an audience of guitar enthusiasts gathered to watch Julian Bream work with advanced students and young professionals from this country and abroad on music that reflects the full range of the classical guitar. In this third programme, the music is by Johann Sebastian Bach, the fugue from his first violin sonata. It's often played on the lute, but in tonight's programme, Julian Bream works on the equally effective transcription for guitar. Taking part are two Canadian guitarists, Dan Beckerman and Lynn Gangbar, and Londoner Gerald Tolan. Dan Beckerman was born in Toronto and studied the guitar both there and at the Royal College of Music in London. He's still only 21, but already holds an honours diploma from the Royal College and has given a number of important recitals in Canada. Gerald Tolan from London studied at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. Among recent engagements, he was the soloist in Richard Rodney Bennett's Guitar Concerto at last year's Camden Festival, and he's just made his first record. Lynn Gangbar, like Dan Beckerman, was born in Toronto and began playing the guitar when she was seven. At 12, she took part in masterclasses with Julian Bream at Stratford, Ontario, and the following year, her playing was warmly praised by Segovia. Later, she came to London and graduated at the Royal College of Music and has since given many recitals in this country. This is a really magnificent fugue and it shows for the performer just how imaginative they can be in the use of uh, dramatic uh, inflections in the sound and also uh, in dynamic inflections. The fugue was originally written for the violin and also exists uh, in a version for the organ and also for the lute. And since guitarists are very keen to poach uh, lute, poach upon lute territory, um, we find that the actual version for the lute transposed to A minor sounds very good on the guitar. Though sometime uh, after perhaps about 1880, Tariga made an arrangement which was in fact uh, an arrangement of the violin version and one or two other uh, performers have also uh, arranged the fiddle version. However, a number of younger performers are, are going back to the original version for the lute, which I must say is very interesting, but of the three versions, uh, it is, in my opinion, the, 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 the least attractive or perhaps the most dull. The version that I use myself is a, mi a mixture, a collation of the lute and the violin version, with, I think, as I remember correctly, a couple of licks from the organ version. However, now, Dan, you're going to play basically uh, the, the violin version, aren't you, in your yes, that's right. performance? Fine, well, could you begin? Let's hear how it sounds.
Um, it was a good performance, but the rhythm was very inconsistent. And I think in a work of this monumental magnificence, that one must really keep the rhythm as controlled as possible. Yes. There were certain passages that suddenly changed tempo. In fact, where I just stopped you, yes. we always went into another piece in terms of the change of tempo. Yes. I think we should try and arrive at uh, the correct or the tempo that you like and really stick to it. Um, apart from the fact that it gives a feeling that the piece is made up of many sections, which it, which it is, but one of the, the great um, important things as a musician, particularly in a work of this nature, is to give the feeling that when you sort of heard the first note, you've almost heard the last note. You've got to give a wonderful overall sweep to the work. And the only way you can do that is integrate each musical section as smoothly as possible. I mean, it was rather like driving a car in your performance without a clutch. You know, OK, you got it into gear, but there was an awful lot of noise and uh, shudder. The great thing is it needs a great deal of clutch control, this piece. And so you've got to really try, by using tone colour and all sorts of artifice, to give the feeling that the piece in itself is one gigantic, uh, magnificent, beautiful note. Um, with regard to the other aspects of the performance, it was a little bit pedestrian. It was a little bit... I mean, it was very solid. But you know, there again, at the very beginning, we were sitting down on ourselves instead of being lifted up by the, the whole ambience of that very simple but beautiful opening phrase. I, I tend not to be too determined at the beginning because there's plenty of other music later on which one could be very determined about. So I give it a little lightness, not flippancy, but lightness. And another thing, remember, that there is a rest before the first note. Yeah. So it's, I always myself do this, like just a little nod of the head or even take a breath, a tiny breath. It gets you into it, you see. But if you start going down, the rhythm's lost. Yes. And very sustained. There. You notice how the tenor and, and bass, uh, uh, tenor and alto voices are lighter than the than the the theme, and how I try to phrase it. If I can give you some idea, I'll do that again. So I didn't do that. as soon as we get into semi-quavers, but control it. Yes. And now, the other thing is that these semi-quavers must be light. They must ripple along. And you're using the thumb an awful lot which is a very heavy uh, part of one's anatomy, a uh, finger anatomy. I think if you use the fingers more, you see, uh, you see? That's right, and then phrase this. Uh, Out of one single strand of melody, we, uh, we, we have a suggestion of a second. 
one, then. You see the idea that the, although there's only one strand of melody, there is a second voice Im implied, you see. Da 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 di da, ti da da. We want more of that effect, you see, uh, in that opening semiquaver passage. Could you go from the, that semiquaver passage that we've just been doing? Um, yeah, do it as you do it, for the moment. because this is the important bit. You see, this is where the rhythm goes to pop. You see, you suddenly go into another piece of rhythm. Just look. Try again. Hold it. Keep it controlled. I think that the opening of this new section should be light. Perhaps phrase it like that, just for a, for a change. <laughs> now look, I don't use the thumb, it's only the fingers for lightness. The reason for that is this. of the thumb has such uh, force or such strength, as weight, has much more much weight. Much more effect when you, when you save it for no, that. That's what I did. I saved it up, you see. Yes. And I let the other two voices just dance along, just using my fingers. And, you know, light. Yes. And, and not these legatos. Uh, that sounds too much like uh, Mendelssohn or something. They, they pluck them. lighter, you see. Um, whatever it is. Um, I don't know, I forgot that. That's why. <laughs> now, look, I think the thing ought to dance a bit now. emotional for me, so I yeah. go up onto the third string, you see, like this. You get carried away. Nothing wrong with that. It's a really martial entry, that. You see, I make that romantic, this bit. 
So it's a, yeah. and it has terrific force and strength. You've got to use all the artifice that the guitar can give to yes. give this work such stature. Yeah. And not too much sum in the passage work, you see. Yes. Yeah. You see, it's very, it, when you want to play lightly, you must use the fingers. Of course. If you want to be emphatic, use the thumb. Well, thank you very much. I think we'll have to leave it there, Dan. Okay. Thank very you very much. much. Thank you very Good. much. Now, Gerald, what version are you going to play of this fugue? Well, I think it's mainly the... The lute, lute version? The lute version with oh, a bit good. of violin. Yeah. Oh, with a bit of violin. A bit of violin. Yes. Yeah. No organ bits. Uh, no, the organ part. Ah, well, that's quite a good version, still. So we've got the lute version with a little bit of the violin version thrown in. Hmm. Go. can do with music, I mean what it gives away in a sense, uh, certainly it reflects very much pe a person's character. I can see from that performance that you really are a no-nonsense man. Uh, the, way you, the way you attack the opening there t with terrific gusto yeah. and, uh, and not a little expertise too. My feeling about the playing by and large was that it, it was a bit at times ill-considered. It was as though you were having a really good romp with this piece and you were going to have a romp right through to the end. And I must say that to listen to, um, there were some really lovely moments, but there weren't enough of them. And I think your playing could be a little bit more refined. I, I think that your right hand moves too much. It's too agitated. 
and I think you could get finer sounds from the instrument. The, the thickness of the texture of the sound mm. um, is good for certain passages, but for counter contrapuntal music, you need to have a finer texture so that all the voices can sing through um, the, uh, the texture of sound. Yeah. Now, I mean, could we not quite attack the opening? I mean, it was very effective, nearly threw me off my pedestal here, you know. But I think to have just to be a little bit restrained, not too much, yeah. but can you try that opening? Just a little, a little cleaner, not quite so much sound, and try to produce a silvery sound as opposed to a gold sound. I think we'd have more feeling of the counterpoint if you could cut down on that thick noise. You know, that, now that really wasn't... Can you start again? Yeah. What happens if you did a top straight? I mean, you know, coming down the next... Yeah. Now, can you do that very light now? Using... See, it was rhythmical, and the sound was good. It's still a bit heavy. Yeah. See, so even the top stroke still, but a little lighter. Good. Yeah, I find that that, um, that sort of thick noise up here at the opening is doesn't give the music a chance to breathe, or the counterpoint a chance to breathe, you see. I think... Uh, you see, we must try and keep the sound quality as uniform as possible, particularly in the opening mm. passages. You see, there's a sunny... It's, it, it, it loses the elegance that it sh I think it should have at this stage, certainly. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I, I think that the sound on that string there mirrors the sound of the start. Yeah, I would agree. In fact, I was going to suggest... I was probably that, hacking away at it. Yeah, a little sure. bit. I mean, almost like it's that, elegant. you see. Yeah. No, I think one's got to aim at some elegance. It is the 18th century, after all, you know. Uh, so... And also, the longer the string length that you have, the more sustained the sound. And, and uh, I, I find that the shorter string is very effective, but at this stage it's got almost too much personality for the abstraction of the yeah, counterpoint. Yeah. Can you try it again? I mean, keep it up on that string at the moment, yeah, just, but well, just give it a little less yeah, juice, yeah. you know. Uh, what, just a little in? less. Yeah, go from the top. Now, that's not rhythmical. Really now, what, you remember what I said to, to Dan? Yeah. What was that? Well, you take a big breath. No, no, a big one. No, no, no. Just... That's all. <laughs> Go on, you try it. No, you didn't get it right. Go on, just move your head. Your shit. Like that. Controlled enough. A, a chap with the abilities that you've got, the, the, the right hand's bouncing around too much. You should be using very much more of the top stroke, you know, resting on the next string. You see, the movement's very small. Yeah. You see? And when the movement's small, you've got greater control. I think you've got to try and you know, cut down the movement. It's, it's, and, and also the tone gets a little ununiform, you know, when you've got a lot of movement going. Yeah, yeah. Try it again. Don't forget about the little nod at the beginning. With rest stroke. Yeah, yeah that's stroke. right. Yeah. As rest as you can. Yeah, well, that isn't rhythmical. You see, look. That, that. You must give full value to those. Yeah. 
to finish that phrase. Dan, you know, it should be lighter, the texture, and using the thumb on the third, you know, it's very heavy. Yeah. Can you hear how the two voices are absolutely identically matched? Mm. And that is because I'm not using the thumb. I'm just using the fingers, and I think that's something you could look at, uh, yeah. both you and Dan, in fact, at that mm. point. Good. I'd like to hear the end of this piece. We haven't got to the end of it yet. So let's go from... Could you, would you mind picking it up in the middle? Uh, for, for example, uh, where would you like to go from? We'd like, this is quite a good place, isn't it? Somewhere like that. This was just too much, you know. It, it's got to be very uh, discreet. Sorry. That's right. That's that. The piece suddenly sits down on, on itself, and then we've got another few coming up. So let's go go from somewhere like. the chord stays the same, yeah. change the dynamic to increase the dynamic. Yeah, but you see in a sense the music or structure is so important to keep that, that the here four chords of C major mm. isn't too boring really and if you make them beautiful it's not boring at all mm. but you've got to make them beautiful yeah. and you weren't making them beautiful and I know you can make them beautiful, so try it
yeah. that was going very nicely. But it, but it, it's, everything is so beautiful. Let the music speak. Just let the music say. And then listen. You've got a real dramatic yeah. entry, you yeah. see. But if you're going to play, you know, as strong as that, that, that it's got almost too much personality. Yeah. Forcing the time. Yeah, and we want to hear the music. We like you very much, you know, but we like the music too. <laughs> and another thing, and I can feel this when you're playing, does your, do you find your concentration just goes a bit? Just every now and then, you, not that you get bored, but you don't quite concentrate for a split second every now. Yeah. Am I wrong? Or well, that ha has happened. Because yeah. I can hear that the music goes along beautifully, and suddenly, for a split second, the, the music falls apart, yeah. and then it picks up again. Yeah. I just wondered if you could really glue your attention right the way through the piece, you know, that it would be a smoother performance. Yeah. Anyway, it was a very entertaining. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So. Me? No, I'm not getting tired. I find this music just invigorates one. I may fall flat on my face at the end of the programme, but that's something else. Good. Well, we're getting to know this piece now. At least you know how I like it to go, don't you, by now? Good. Well, don't copy me, because I find one of the stimulating things about taking classes that that... Uh, you know, I, I pick up on a few things too. <laughs> Good. Well, no, it was very good. No, no, I, I, I thought actually that it was very fine, but um, I just got an idea. You know, you're always playing with your head down here. And you know, I wondered in this sort of music whether if you could just lift your head a bit, you know, for the. You know, somehow when one's down here, apart from the fact that you're putting a tremendous strain on your shoulders, I think. When your head's up a little bit, um, you can breathe that's for a start, yeah, and you get less interested in the fingers, and perhaps a bit more interested in the music. But I thought that a lot of the playing was really lovely and very musical, and then just occasionally mm -hmm. uh, there would be uh, something a little bit ill-considered, you know, mm -hmm. almost as though you're not listening to yourself, just a chord, something <laughs> like that, and right out of character. Could I try just from once more from the beginning? Yeah, sure. Well, I know. Well, we're, we're all nervous. You know. I know exactly how you feel. I thought it was very nice, but do do try a little. Let's, okay, let's hear a bit of the beginning again. Very musical it was. 
Yeah, now look, can I just say something? It's the first time we hear it, and I, we don't want it nicely dressed up. You know, there are about 400 entries in this piece in that, I should think, well, anyway, a large number of entries. Then we can begin to dress it up as the piece goes along, and as we want to, in a dramatic way. But the first entry really must be quite plain and beautiful in its abstraction. Not too much personality, just enough. Right, here we go again. Do you remember what I said? Can you do that? Now, if you lift it up your head a bit, you could. Can you do it without the left hand legato? You, you see, that's it. You see, that's it's too romantic. You know, we just want the the architecture. That's it. Already that entry, we've got two more entries to come. That entry, that third entry, has got too much prominence already, you see. beautifully it's too pretty you know the music's got a, a, a terrific uh, character at this point it must never be pretty
you see there again, I, I must be very old-fashioned or newfangled, but I, I much prefer the longer string lengths in this sort. I find this, it's got too much personality, in a sense, for the abstraction of the music. This, uh, uh, Honesty about that. Then, uh, you see, it's unfast, and you really hear the bones of the music. And you know, it's so beautiful. One doesn't want to always over adorn it with tone colour and, and and second string high up and a, you know, chocolate spodge style. You know, it's nice. I love this, but it's so beautiful. Just let, just to let the instrument be. Without any vibrato and a nice long string length in a low position, you can hear the counterpoint. That's true. That's what we're all about, you know, in this piece, hearing the counterpoint. Mm -hmm. So you get that, get that bit refingered. Good. Uh, let's go on a bit. Let's, let, I'd like to hear you play from, uh, where would you like to go from? Um, perhaps, let's go from somewhere like that. Fine. Is you've got some wonderful marks on the music, like nice tone, mellow, tone, don't drag, and all that sort of thing. But in fact, the tone wasn't all that good when you uh, played those passages. Um, I think that um, a lot of that's very good, but you're not listening to yourself. And I think if you could just sit back a bit, I think you you just get a perspective on what you're doing, you know. Because so much of what you're doing is beautiful. And then suddenly, the, the beautiful sound and ambience that you create is wrecked. Okay, not, I mean, disastrously so, but I'm overstating it a bit, by just a little bit of ill-considered playing, simply because you're not really listening to yourself. And I think the same goes for all the three of you in this programme, that the standard has been really very good, and a lot of the playing excellent. But it's as though that each of you suffer from moments of, of not concentrating totally right the way through the piece. And I think in a piece of this nature, if you don't do that, um, one loses the basic structure of the music, which is so important. That there are just those moments when as, it's as though the concentration just goes. And in a piece of this nature, which, you know, is a gigantic piece formally and structurally, uh, one has got to keep the concentration going the whole way through without let up. But apart from that, it was very nicely done. Thank you very much. Thank you.